Yeah, I can build us a wing. I 100% <laughs> have a way to do a wing that grows. It's physics, math, and engineering. Machine it, draft it, build it, test it, break it. Every time something new gets built, the entire world advances. Laying in bed at night, it's designing new parts, designing new suspension, designing new wings. Hey, Mike, your airplane doesn't have any wings. <laughs> um, <laughs> you're right. I think maybe one or two of you have asked me why my airplane doesn't have any wings. Huh. Maybe we should go talk about it. <laughs> Come here. I'm building the entire video. And this time we're just gonna talk a little bit about Scrappy it has no wings on it. <laughs> and a lot of you make me laugh. I love your comments. Somebody or several of you maybe have said <laughs> Scrappy doesn't need wings. With that much horsepower, it's more like a helicopter or a rocket. It's going to Mars. And um, <laughs> that's awesome. I, I, I love the comments and the fact that you're all asking about the wings. I thought I would at least talk about it. So let's dive into Scrappy's wing concept. And pretty soon, we'll actually start building it. So when you're designing a set of wings, everything and everyone in aviation understands that it understands it. It's a trade off. And if it's the first time here, and you haven't seen my channel, I usually am building everything carbon fiber to metal to build unique, crazy flying aircraft. From hot rods to slow flying, the one I'm building right now, the wing we're talking about is Scrappy. It's a bush plane to fly slow as possible and as fast as possible. So this wing, from the start, I have literally, from the start of Scrappy, been contemplating how I'm going to build a wing to take the envelope of, do I build a wing that flies really, really slow, but the top end sucks? or a plane that flies really, really fast, but it stalls so hot that I can't get into the super tiny strips I want to get to. Rather than penduling what wing I want, how do I push the boundaries of both ends? How do I fly slower and faster? And that's been the challenge. That's all I've been working on since the start of Scrappy. So Scrappy is unique. All of you that have watched my builds over the years, Scrappy, build number 14. Um, I usually have wings right from day one. And this one's different. It's because I'm going to push the envelope. I'm going to try something that hasn't been done before. Big surprise. Yeah. I've had theories that have been bouncing around in my head for a long time. And for an entire year now, I have been spitting out papers, analysis, flow sheets on how every wing in existence that I can get my hand on the profile and how those perform. I spit out a sheet that tells me how much lift force it creates over a given inch, a given foot, how much drag it creates on frontal load so I know how fast it can be. And I've been doing it on carbon cub wings, zenith wings, um, jets, racers, uh, warbirds. I have literally been just inputting airfoil after airfoil and analyzing how well they did and where they performed best. Where did they park that wing design? A jet, <laughs> it flies way over here and the competition Valdez Super Stoles fly way over here. And I just want to broaden that range. So that's what I've been doing. Uh, I, I laughed at <laughs> all the comments. Where's the wings? Where's the wings? Literally, when I'm done sanding, grinding, welding, 
carbon fiber. I go home and I draw, and I come up with an idea, and I put it in this computer, and I've, I've had to actually upgrade the computer. I was doing flow analysis that would take 12, 14 hours straight to spit out one uh, set of numbers I needed for a given wing. And so I, I actually added up 32 more core processors, three more graphic cards, and I've got my computer now running faster where most of the big heavy lifting analysis is done in three or four hours. So it's going a lot faster now um, since I just made these upgrades, but um, it's a lot of work. So let's talk about what I wanna do. Um, if I make a cub with a, a wing with a high camber, high camber just means that the arc between the bottom of the flat surface of the plane and the arc of the top, if you average the line that is the flat to the top and you take an average center point and draw a line, a camber is the average of all those points going across. The higher I arc the camber, the more lift a given area of wing creates. The more lift that generates, the slower I can fly. But that increases drag, so my x-axis plane load forces go up. So trying to decide how much camber versus drag is just the laws of physics that stop a wing from being able to do everything. And I wanted to find a path to do something more. And so I had some ideas and some of them, most of them worked, they all worked in concept but part of the problem is you do a design and then you start making manipulation and changes and then you get it all done. You go, wow, the math is great, but the parts and complexity to make it happen doesn't pay off. So you start again. You go, okay, that worked, but then there's this problem. And so it, it's been awesome. And we'll talk more about that at another time, but little things like what if, what if your wing, you just added a lot more flap? Well, you lose aileron. You lose aileron, you might get a plane that flies slow, but the slower you go, the less air you have over your aileron control surface. You can't roll it and the planes tip and hit wings and we've, we've seen them happen online, lots of videos about that. If we can add more flap, stress the wing, add more aileron, that's great too. If you stress the wing too long, you might get tight to get into some places, so that's a juggling act. What if you could grow the wing out the side? I played with that concept. Actually, it was really fun and a set of track rolling with uh, alignment uh, bearings that track the wing further in and out. Uh, it's great, complexity is high, and then the real bottom line is, what about my favorite places that the trees are really close together? Um, yeah, I can build us a wing. I 100% <laughs> have a way to do a wing that grows, but wait, and the, the practicality of where I actually want to put the plane kind of made that one a little bit off the table. One of the things, if you move the flap down, plane gets pitching moment, it lifts the back of the plane, so you move your elevator up, the air on the back pushes the plane back down because you're swinging from a pendulum in the sky right here, the center of lift of your aircraft. Um, the more flap you add, the more elevator you need, if you, keep, if you get to a point where you have too much flap going too slow, you run out of elevator, which means your stick comes to your gut. You can no longer hold enough weight or downward aerodynamic load to hold the tail down and the nose up and you nose over. So well, what really is happening is I'm making the plane heavier. Sure, it may still be 1,500 pounds loaded up, but more elevator means more weight. More weight means the wing is going to stall sooner. So what if we could get the lifting bubble to not shift and create a pitching moment that would, that's forcing us to add weight at the back of the plane to hold the airplane up, which means the wing actually has to carry the additional load you put here by pivoting it here. What if we could do something to change that? Um, what about leading edge devices? Slats. Um, slats are awesome. They actually help a lot. But some of the questions I went into is, why are they the size they are? Why do they look exactly the same 50 years later? 
Um, probably because they work. <laughs> but I wanted to play with it. What happens if I did analysis on a bigger gap at the front, a smaller gap at the back? What if I changed the shape of it? What if I made it bigger? What if I made it smaller? These are all things I've been doing for a year. <laughs> Questions. What's the best angle of incident? What's the best for cruise? What's the best for visibility? How much is too much camber? How much flap is too much? Should you go 30, 40, 50, 60, 90? At what point does a flap create so much pitching moment that your elevator induced load to carry the plane back actually swaps places? When is that? And it's different on every airplane. So these are the things I've been asking myself. What about VGs here? Here, some on the front, some at the back. What about VGs and slats? What about slats that retract or stay fixed? What if the slat is supposed to be under the wing or above the wing? These are the things I've been playing with. What about the wing tips? Should they droop down? Should they droop up? Should you have no wing tip with a slat, a, a slotted angle at the, at the edge to carry the air further out? Those are things I've been asking myself for a year. How big should my elevator be? How much counterweight do I want to add there? Where should everyone be positioned on CG for the final location of my wing to maximize how much elevator I'm going to need, whether I have one person or two people in the aircraft? At what point does the back of the wing start to let go when you aren't using your flaps? How does the air flow through a double slotted flap in all degrees of flap deployment. How much can I reflex the flap on a high lift wing to decrease lift at top end and minimize the down elevator to hold the aircraft at a level attitude at maximum forward flight? How does a leading edge device work when it's a slat versus a droop? Slats, VGs, or both What's going to be the best way to keep the air laminar over the top of the wing in slow flight? What's the best size, shape, and gapping of a slat to maximize the air and pressure over the top of the wing? At what point do your ailerons become ineffective at a given angle of attack and airspeed relative to the shape of wing? At what angle of attack and airspeed does the air change direction and flow forward on the back of the wing? Can we alter the lifting location of the wing to counteract the pitching moment of a flap? Can we manipulate the lifting bubble during flight? Could we manipulate the front of the wing to maximize the air going over or under for high or low speed flight characteristics? What kind of velocity increases can we get over the top of the wing at various shapes? Can we reshape the front of the wing without diminishing its flying characteristics to reduce the pressure zone at the front edge? So there's lots of little things that are actually big deals. And I fly people's planes all the time. I can't believe how many of you just hand me the keys to your plane. Matter of fact, one of you actually handed me the keys to your helicopter in Alaska. Thank you. And trust me with it. You guys are nuts. Are you crazy? <laughs> um, but you let me get in your plane and fly them. And I tell you what, every plane is so different. Their pitching moment, their CG, pressure input controls, how much pressure you have, what it changes at slow flight versus flat, fast flight. And these are all the things I've been contemplating when designing the final step of Scrappy's wing. So it's been a process and it's been really, really fun. And I thought I really understood wings years ago. And uh, I feel like I understand them so much more than I ever have. And I know I still have more to learn. So uh, we're gonna build this crazy new idea it's never been done. See what else we can come up with. Literally hundreds of iterations 
everywhere, on every wing, and I have come to an end. Meaning, I have an idea that finally came to a closure. I have got design freeze. Hallelujah! Praise the Lord, praise Jesus! On the engineering side of things, design freeze means you're done playing <laughs> with a hundred ideas. And you've said, that's the one. And then you took that idea and you ran it all the way, start to finish, every concept you had, and you tweaked it and changed it and altered it. I know the wing that I'm gonna build. Now, the problem is there's no parts for it. <laughs> I wanted a spar, doesn't exist. I have to build a spar from scratch. I have to make a mold to extrude hot aluminum and spit out my own spars because I can't get a spar for any cup in existence out there and just add spar doubler and make it work the way I want it to work or to be the size I want. So scratch, this is where scrappy becomes scratchy. Scratch, scratch build. I got that from one of you guys. Um, so scratch build is gonna happen. I have to build everything right down to my ribs, all the components. There are a couple parts I'm gonna be able to sneak out, some uh, pulleys and different things, maybe some wing struts uh, I'll be able to use, but um, I'm now gonna get started. I gotta put a few things away on scrapping, finish some cowling, finish some paint, get its exact final weight. We'll adjust the last little tweak on uh, the wing loading I want for the plane. That's what I'm gonna do now. Button up Scrappy, start building parts. We have some wings to do. So those of you who have asked, there are no wings in hiding. <laughs> There's no parts stacked up somewhere. I'm really, really sorry. But I have worked on these wings literally enough hours I could have built at least 10 sets of anybody's wings and put them on Scrappy. And all I have is piles of paper and hundreds of folders in this computer of everything we've tried. So it's time to start building something. So you guys know the drill. <laughs> Let's get some wings. Back to work. guys is there maybe one or two of you actually watch this video all the way to the end credits <laughs> um all right i want to go ahead and give you a little bit more tell you a little bit about what i'm doing to this wing so i mentioned briefly in the video that i i don't really want to stretch the length of the wing i want to try something a little more difficult and still get into the narrow spots i want to see if i can stretch the cord of the wing the width the depth I wanna see if I can alter how much camber I have during flight. I wanna see if I can adjust the way the air interacts on the front for high speed and low speed. I wanna do that while I'm flying. And I also wanna see the biggest challenge I wanna try and accomplish. And I'm gonna try it and I have it drawn, but I want to manipulate the entire wing so that as the flaps deploy, the lifting area on the wing moves forward to counteract the flaps pitching moment to minimize how much aft elevator so that I can get all of the benefit of lift without adding induced pressure or load on the back. So I'm gonna make a transformer, <laughs> at least something, a baby version, but my wing will alter in flight in direct relation to what it needs for flat movement, low speed, high speed. I don't know if it's gonna work. It looks like it is on the computer. We're gonna try it out in real life. So let's make a wing 
that changes for every flight characteristic I want to try. Wish me luck. I hope you follow along. Like, subscribe. Thanks for sticking out. Clear to the end. Let's build a wing. Back to work.